in this video we're going to talk about cartesian product of sets okay let's say you're hungry and you want to eat something there are two options you can pick these two things you can order and you can go out you can pick any one of them but what are you going to eat well here are three options you can have a pizza you can have a burger or you can have an ice cream i mean in real life there are many more options but for this video we're going to stick with these things the question is what are the possible combinations for you this is what we have we can order a pizza we can order a burger we can order an ice cream or we can go out and have a pizza we can go out and have a burger or we can go out and have an ice cream now each of them can be written as an ordered pair the first element can tell us what we are doing and the second one can tell us what we are eating so we have these six ordered pairs we have these six ordered pairs we have six possible combinations we have six ordered pairs now when we put all six of them inside a set so these six now become elements of a set this set this powerful set is called the cartesian product we get one cartesian product so we started with two sets the first set was things that we were doing the second set was things that we are eating and what happened here is we found the cartesian product of these two sets now let's look at the definition given two non empty sets p and q the cartesian product p times q since it's a product we use the multiplication sign the cartesian product p times q is the set of all ordered pairs from p and q what we're saying is this we're saying that the cartesian product is the set of all ordered pairs p comma q from p and q this means the first elements will be from p and the second elements will be from q and what's important about this cartesian product is we can't just have a few ordered pairs we need to carefully look at both p and q and find all ordered pairs and combine them in this set let's talk about the number of elements how many elements do cartesian products have let's take the same example if p is a set of what we're doing and it has these two elements order and go out and we have this another set q which is the set of what we're eating and it has three elements pizza burger and ice cream so the number of elements in p n of p is 2 and the number of elements of q n of q is 3 and this is our cartesian product p times q how many elements does this have well this has six elements six is 2 times 3 and in general you can find the number of elements in a cartesian product by multiplying the number of elements of the sets involved so p has 2 and q has 3 so 2 times 3 gives us 6 and this is the general way of writing it now let's practice let's find the number of elements of a few cartesian products the first one is p is 1 and 2 p has these two elements q has a b and c these three elements let's find the cartesian product of p and q and also find its number of elements p times q is this set we start with 1 we use 1 and a we get 1a 1 and b we get 1b 1 and c we get 1c and then 2a 2b 2c note that we don't have a1 we're moving from p to q so the first element will always be from p and the second element will always be from q so we have these six elements 2 times 3 is also 6 the number of elements is 6 okay Let's try one more. We have p as one and two, and then q is an empty set. Find the Cartesian product and the number of elements. Now, if we try to find the Cartesian product, we are stuck. We can start with one, but we have nothing to combine it with. There is no second element. So, what we actually end up with is an empty set of phi. P was here with two elements, but q came up with nothing. So, when we wanted to combine both of them, we got nothing. And in this case, we will have no elements for this Cartesian product. 2 times 0 is 0. What about this third case? P has the same elements and this time Q brought a very large list. So what will be P times Q? What will be the Cartesian product? Okay. So the Cartesian product will be 1 1 1 2 1 3 and so on. This will never end. Also we'll have elements like 2 1 2 2 2 3 and so on. Because Q has infinite elements, P times Q will also have infinite elements. So the number will be 2 times something infinite which gives us something 
infinite. So we have covered these three cases. In the first case, both P and Q had finite elements, so their Cartesian product was a finite set. In the second case, one of them came up empty handed, this set was empty, and hence the Cartesian product was also an empty set. For the third one, one of them was an infinite set, so we got an infinite set as their Cartesian product. Now this also works if both of them were infinite sets. Alright, let's wrap this up with one last question. Is the Cartesian product of P and Q the same as the Cartesian product of Q and P? The answer is no, but let's look at an example. If P is 1 and 2 and Q is A, B and C, what is the Cartesian product P times Q? Well that's 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, 2C, these are 6 elements. And what's Q times P? That's A1, A2, B1, B2 and C1, C2. The elements are in the reverse order. And because 1A is not the same as A1, none of these elements match the elements of this set. So P times Q is not the same as Q times P. And that's true in general, but the number of elements will still be the same. Because we can find the number of elements by multiplying the elements of P and Q, and multiplication works in both directions. So the sets are not the same, but their number of elements are.